We've seen quite a few breakthroughs in smartphone photography over the past few years, but none seems to have been adopted quite as quickly as night mode. Huawei seems to have started the most recent trend with the P20 family last spring, and many manufacturers followed suit with their own versions, including some more budget-friendly phones that might surprise a few folks. But some more expensive flagships, namely Samsung's Galaxy lineup, have yet to get an official night mode of any kind. So the first question we'll be asking is whether or not night mode is really necessary, and then after that, we're going to take a look at whether the price of a phone has any substantial effect on that night mode quality, or if those more budget-friendly models will suffice. First, let's take a look at the auto mode on the Mate 20 Pro and the Galaxy Note 9, which are the top two low-light cameras for simple point-and-shoot, and compare them with night mode shots from various other phones. Here's why this really matters. Auto mode shots are generally taken instantly, or at most with maybe a half a second delay. Night mode shots, on the other hand, are generally taken over the course of several seconds, anywhere from 3 to 10 seconds on average, and represent a significant time difference to say the least. If auto mode can keep up with a night mode shot in quality and available light, it's probably more worth it to just stick with auto mode for those quick shots instead of trying to hold still for several seconds while trying to use night mode, right? Right. These first couple of shots showcase the difference between the auto mode on the Galaxy Note 9, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, and the Google Pixel 3 along that bottom row. And up top, you're going to see the same shots on the Mate 20 and the Pixel 3's night modes just to showcase the possible differences. In these scenarios, it's pretty clear who has the brightest auto mode. That'd be the Mate 20 Pro, while the Note 9's consistently pulls out more detail for two reasons. First off, the Note's exposure is not nearly as high, so in areas with lots of light, you won't see those ultra-bright highlights that appear in the Mate's pictures. Secondly, Samsung seems to refuse to push the ISO higher than 1250, which keeps noise from entering the scene, but makes it significantly darker than Huawei's photos. For reference, the highest we saw the Mate 20 Pro's ISO go was 65,535 in this super dark scene. This of course gives the appearance at first glance that the auto and night modes might have been swapped for the Mate 20 Pro, but upon close inspection, you'll realize that the auto mode's goal is to get as much light into the scene as possible, which is going to come at the expense of noise and detail. Night mode, on the other hand, tries to capture the scene with as much detail as possible, which makes it a bit darker, but way less noisy and far more detailed because of it. You can always adjust the ISO and the shutter settings in Huawei's night mode anyway, so if you don't like the result first time around, it's easy enough to adjust the settings. If you're looking for a quick low-light shooter that can still deliver good results, it's pretty clear the Note 9 and the Mate 20 Pro are the way to go. Depending on if you prefer more detail or more light, you'll just have to choose what's more important to you. The Pixel 3's low-light performance on auto mode is just pure garbage. It's really fortunate for Google that Night Sight exists, because otherwise, this would be one of the worst low-light flagship performances in a long time. Something we pointed out in the review, and something that still holds true a couple months later. When comparing the Note 9's auto mode to the night modes of the Mate 20 Pro and the Pixel 3, it's really surprising how well the Note 9 does despite not shooting long exposures or using a high ISO. In fact, unless you're regularly trying to take pictures of places with little to no light at all, the super quick shutter of the Note 9's auto mode and its obviously good results may even be preferable to either of the other phone's night modes, as all of these shots took around 6 or 7 seconds to capture on the Pixel 3 and the Mate 20 Pro, while the Note 9 took the shots you see in about half a second. While night mode might be needed in super dark situations, the quick results of auto mode are probably preferable more often than not. Then there's also the fact that no OEM currently has a timer functionality for night mode, so you can't set a 5 or 10 second timer, set the phone down somewhere and wait for it to take a nice longer exposure, Rather, you'll just have to hold it the whole time. Not exactly great for group shots of your friends or family when you're out at night. Now comes the question of price. Is it really necessary to spend upwards of a thousand bucks on a super high-end flagship that can take excellent low-light shots? Or are one of the more budget-friendly phones with night mode comparable? We're now going to add the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3, the OnePlus 6T, the Oppo R17 Pro, and the Honor View 20 to the list, 
which all retail for between $450 and $650. Bucks. Looking between the cheaper of the seven, it's pretty clear the OnePlus 6T has the worst night mode of the bunch. It's not just that it's darker, but it also has more noise, less detail, and tends to get the colors wrong to varying degrees, depending on the type and quantity of light in the scene. Between the Oppo R17 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3, the R17 Pro seems to edge out the Mi Mix 3 in more situations than not, but Xiaomi has definitely created a very capable night mode on the Mi Mix 3 in general. I think the Mix's biggest problem is that, like OnePlus, it does not give itself very long to take additional shots or longer exposures, which is going to artificially limit the amount of light in a scene. Oppo also has the advantage because, like Samsung's Galaxy S9 or Note 9 series, it features a dual aperture lens which allows the camera to utilize a super bright f-stop 1.5 lens for those low light shots. That's enough to make the difference in these shots and pull it near the top of the more budget friendly list. Honor on the other hand is utilizing a brand new 48 megapixel sensor, the first of its generation in mobile phones, which performs a pixel binning process to bring more light into the sensor than would otherwise be possible. While some other phones like LG's recent lineup can also perform this pixel binning formula, Honor's strength comes in the sheer megapixel count, as it can cut that count by a quarter and still have a higher resolution photo than the full frame sensor on other phones. The results speak for themselves. Comparing the Honor View 20 with more expensive phones like the Mate 20 Pro and the Pixel 3 XL leaves little room for wondering why Honor chose this methodology. Like parent company Huawei, Honor's use of pixel binning and what they call AI stabilization clearly seem to work wonders when compared to other phones in the same price range. The Oppo R17 Pro, which did better than the other two phones we compared it with at around the same price range, can look pretty bad compared to the other three phones here in very dark scenes, but it's going to mostly hold its own in even slightly more light, although in general it's going to be a slightly darker image and it's going to have slightly more noise than the other ones. As is always the case with photography on a smartphone, things are very situationally dependent. Google's night sight mode does an amazing job of producing an incredibly well-balanced, color-accurate scene in even the darkest of environments, as evidenced by the picture of this painting, but is also far more prone to excessive noise than other phones. As a result, detail can be hit or miss, and while sometimes it has the most detail of all, it will also have the least detail in other scenarios, and even more, sometimes it has a hard time focusing on the scene as well, while the other phones don't seem to suffer from this issue. Huawei and Honor tend to have the cleanest, most detailed imagery, with the Mate 20 Pro pulling ahead in both categories in many situations, but they will sometimes not have the color accuracy of Google Shots and aren't nearly as bright at times either. It's pretty astounding how well the View 20 does in particular when pitted against far more expensive phones with night mode though, and it goes to show that you don't necessarily need to spend upwards of a thousand bucks or so just to get fantastic low light performance. We hope you enjoyed that comparison and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us on your favorite social media network and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 worldwide tech news coverage. Thanks for watching and until next time.